over here. Uh, not the opponent you were expecting this weekend. Obviously, you were supposed to face Darren Till. You got Chris Curtis stepping in. You know, what was your initial reaction when you heard that Darren Till was out of this fight? Well, I kind of uh, anticipated it through the whole camp. I don't know why, why I just had a bad feeling about it. Maybe because the first time I wanted to fight him, he, he declined the fight. Second time, he pulled from the fight. Third time, you know, he didn't even announce the fight uh, himself. Uh, couldn't see any sign of him fighting. And uh, it just gave me a bad feeling about it. So I kind of had it with me through the whole camp. And to be honest, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> And you've had this before, you know, last moment change of opponents and not knowing who you're going to be fighting. Is that something that you just kind of, you know, how to deal with now? Yeah, and it's a big part of the MMA game. It happens all the time and uh, uh, you just need to be ready for anything. So what do you think of Chris Curtis as, as your, new opponent, uh, your new opponent this weekend? Uh, Chris is a great opponent. He has... Is, uh, he has a lot of experience, a lot of fights, a lot of wins, heavy hands. Um, won all his fights in the UFC, eight fight win streak. So I think he's as good as uh, it, it gets. He's just like uh, one of those guys trying to climb into the rankings now. And uh, yeah, he, he's right up there. He's a great opponent. And we saw you uh, training with Hamzat Shemaev. Uh, how did that come about? Uh, he just showed up on the doorstep, <laughs> and that's the truth. I was, you know, I'm always first at the gym, opening up in the morning. So I was uh, going to the gym, and then like 50 meters away, said, man, that, that looks like concert, you know. <laughs> I'm sure it was, you know. And uh, I didn't ask too much about it, to be honest. I'm, I was just happy to get another high-quality training opponent, uh, training partner. So uh, yeah. I just opened the doors for him and we trained for a week. So you had no idea that he was going to show up? No idea. <laughs> and what was it like training like training with someone like him? I know obviously you've had a wrestling, uh, a grappling match with him before. Uh, what was it like getting to train with him? I have been training with him before as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, yeah, he gets better actually every time uh, I train with him. So uh, um, he's a so solid training partner. Uh, oh, yeah, everybody knows it. He's a, he's a, a great fighter. So that was some, uh, some, he helped me with some great training. And just last one from me. Obviously, he's had a fight announced now with uh, Nate Diaz. How do you think he? How do you think he uh, gets that done? Uh, I think he gets it done <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I really respect Nate and everything he has done, but uh, I feel like uh, yeah, he's getting thrown to the to the wolf now, uh, literally. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Hi. Hi. Was there ever any consideration to not taking the fight with Chris, given that it's short notice? You mentioned he's on a he's on a good win streak, but he's unranked, so the upside for you is pretty small. Whereas if you were fighting a big name in the division like Darren, obviously there's a you know there's much more upside for you. So was there ever a consideration for maybe not taking this fight and holding holding back and seeing if you can get a bigger fight further down the line? Um, not really, but. Uh Immediately when Darren pulled, obviously I asked the UFC for a ranked opponent and uh, checked out who, who is available. They didn't have a ranked opponent for me. So they said, we have Chris Curtis. And I said, yes, because uh, too much preparations, uh, too much training. Uh, I really need to, uh, to use that for something and to stay active and, and to fight. So um, when there was no other options, I accepted the fight. Break down how, how different Chris is as an opponent compared to Darren and, and how you need to sort of just change your approach to the fight in order to uh, to deal with him. Yeah, um, I feel like Darren is more of a sharpshooter, you know. Both are southpaw, so that's good, all the preparations going into that. Uh, Darren has better straight punches and uh, Chris has uh, better uh, hooks and great body shots and uh, uh, a different boxing style, even though both of them uh, uh, do a lot of boxing. So, um, yeah, they are, have some similarities, but uh, some differences as well. Darren has, uh, you know, yeah, he's a little bit taller. And uh, so there's a, a few things, but uh, yeah, I feel like I, I know how to, to handle the both styles. I think you've alternated wins and losses over the last six. 
But the middleweight division is absolutely wide open right now. And I know they're looking for, for challenges to take on Izzy at the top of the division. Obviously, it looks like Alex Pereira will be next. What will you need to do to in order, in order to position yourself? Is it just a case of just getting a bit more consistency, picking up some back-to-back -back wins? Is that the main aim for you right now? Yeah, I think that's it. P putting uh, a win streak together and uh, I should be right up there again. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hey, Jack. You, were you at any time suspicious about Hamsad coming to train with you since obviously he is, you know, best friends with Darren? Um... You know, <laughs> it's it's hard to not think a little bit about it, uh, and uh, you know I haven't. Everybody that I speak to, you know, has their own theory, and some guys are just like, man, he was there, and then you know he saw the shape you were in. He told Darren, "Fuck this, Darren. You know, <laughs> don't do this. You know, if you have an injury, this is not the time to fight Jack." So he kind of tested the, the water. And uh, another one is obviously that he knew that Darren was injured and he wasn't going to take the fight and he just wanted to, good, to get some training in uh, in himself. Um, but, uh, or he just doesn't care, you know, and just, yeah, took the opportunity to go and, uh, and, and train. Uh, either way is fine. Uh, I don't care. I also want to ask you about some of the big fights we just saw in the division and coming up. Uh, what was your thoughts on Alex Pereira's performance against Sean Strickland? Yeah, that's, you know, he has the touch of death. And uh, usually, you know, it's, Strickland can be a really hard, uh, tr tricky person to, to hit. But um, yeah, if uh, Pereira touches you with that left hook, it's a uh, good night for about everybody. And as we saw, uh, there was no uh, difference in the Strickland fight. So he really showed uh, everybody that uh, they have to be aware uh, um, for that the left hook. And how do you see that fight between Alex and Adesanya? I feel like Adesanya has a more uh, a better style suited to MMA. And uh, I think it's going to be hard for Pereira with the distance, the footwork, and uh, you know the, the small gloves and everything uh, like that. So I feel like Adesanya is, is gonna hit him more. But as we know, there's you know he, he only needs one, and uh, that might be enough. So the chance for a knock knockout is uh, is always there. Thank you. Okay. All good. Thank you, guys.